the story of Patti Pujica. Once upon a time, there was a god who lived in the heaven of the thirty-three, and he was known as Garland Wearer, Malapari. He entered the pleasure garden in the world of the thirty-three with a thousand goddesses. Five hundred of these goddesses climbed up trees and threw down flowers from a great height. Five hundred remained on the ground, gathering the flowers and decked the god with them, and this is how they spent their day. Now during this time, one of those goddesses, even as she sat there on a branch, casting flowers down to those below, suddenly passed away and vanished like the flame of a lamp being extinguished. She received a new conception in the womb of a woman of good station in the city of Salvati. She was born with the recollection of her previous states of existence, and remembering her husband, the god, the garland wearer, and recalling her happiness with him, she grew up making gifts of perfumes and garlands, and each time made the earnest wish to be reborn once more with him. When she was sixteen, she was married and went to live with another family, but even then she maintained her practice of offering food, drink and flowers to the monks, each time with the earnest wish, may this offering assist me in obtaining rebirth with my former husband. The monks noticed that with all her service to them, ever busy in administering to their needs, she yearned for her husband, and so they called her Patti Pujika, husband honorer. Over the years, she cared regularly for the Hall of Assembly, making sure that all was in place for any particular time of day, supplying water for the monks for drinking and seats for the monks to sit down. So precisely and with so much care did she make the arrangements that when people came with offerings of food for the monks, they gave it to her and said, Dear lady, pray present these to the congregation of monks on our behalf. Going to and fro in this manner, she obtained at one and the same time the fifty-six qualities of goodness. After some time being married, she became pregnant and gave birth to a son. After a while, when her son had grown up and had learned how to walk, she had another son, and the year after that, another, and again the year after that, yet another. So she had four sons. As her sons grew up, she continued to give alms to the monks and rendered service to them, listened to the Dharma and kept the precepts. At the end of one particular day, having performed her regular duties as before, she succumbed to a sudden sickness and died. She was instantly reborn with her former husband, the garland wearer, back in the pleasure garden where the goddesses were still decking their husband with flowers. When the garland wearer saw her back in the tree, he said, Where have you been? We have not seen you since morning. She replied, I passed away and was reborn into a good family in Savati. When I was sixteen, I married into another family and bore four sons. All the while I gave alms and administered to the needs of the monks, listen to the Dharma and perform various acts of merit, and each time made the earnest wish to be reborn with you, dear husband. The garland wearer was amazed by her account and asked, how long were the lives of men? She replied that they were just one hundred years, and she had lived but one third of that. Now the lives of those in the heaven realms are infinitely longer than this. In fact, one hundred years in the human realm is just one day and one night in the realm of the thirty-three gods, 
and thirty such days make up a month. Twelve such months make up a year, and their lives are a thousand celestial years. So the life in the realm of the thirty-three is equivalent to thirty-six million human years. The garland wearer said, The lives of humans are so short. Surely they must feel some sense of urgency to practice heedfulness and perform acts of merit. But his wife replied, Not so, husband. They are ever heedless, as if reborn with incalculable years to live, as if in no wise subject to old age and death. The garland wearer was shocked by what she told him. With so short a life and behaving in this way, when can they ever hope to be released from suffering? Meanwhile in the human realm, the monks entered the hall of assembly in the morning and found that the seats were not prepared, nor was there any drinking water available. They asked the local people where Patipujika was and why she had not made her usual arrangements. The people answered, How could she, Reverend Sirs? Yesterday evening she succumbed to a sudden illness and died. Recalling the service of the woman and her great acts of merit over many years, the monks were deeply moved by the news of her death. They approached the Buddha, paid respects and sat down to one side. They spoke of Patipujika, so busy and active, with all kinds of merit, yearning only for her husband. Now she was dead, they wondered where she had been reborn. And so the Buddha explained to them all that had passed. How the goddess had died one morning, and was reborn in Savati, grown up and married, with the memory of her former life still fresh. How she had dedicated her acts of merit with the goal to rejoin her celestial husband. And so she had. The monks reflected on how short and uncertain was life. Here was a woman, busy and active in the morning, suddenly passing away at the end of the day. The teacher replied, Yes, monks, the life of creatures in this world is indeed short. While still yearning for the pleasures of the senses, not yet fulfilling their desires, death carries them off. So he pronounced the following stanza. Even while a man is gathering flowers, while his heart is absorbed in pleasure, even before he has satisfied his desires, death overpowers him.